Okay, here's the interface that you see after you've logged in. I've already created a couple of uh, projects there. So for you, you need to create your own. Give it a name, say Lab1. Create project. It takes you directly to the interface where you invited to create questions already. But I should go back to the first page so that you can see Lab1 has been created. And this is where you all will need to share a project. So the person that started will use that function. And you can add the other people in your group in here. They must be UEL email addresses. You can even put personalized messages to them in case you have reminders. So you can add another one and so forth before you click save, where they will all receive an email to say that they have been shared a project by you. So now I double click to go back to where I was invited to start creating the questionnaire. A block is like a section in a questionnaire. And so here your first block may well be your information page, followed by consent statement, and likely to be also some demographics of your participants, like gender and age. Where your first item is not actually a question, because it should be the information page. And therefore, instead of question one, you may change that to info page. And because it's just a lot of text and not a question with multiple choices, you tell Quadrix that by clicking on multiple choice to change it to the alternative of descriptive text. So while that has disappeared, this is a good idea where you have a ready document around you when you're doing Quadrix. So you can just copy and paste directly. It says it's too big, but you can read everything here. Just lock in your own names in the group. And that page is already there. If you want there to be a page break, so that is the next web page where the consent statement appears, then you add the button, add page break. So you've got your um, information page there with a page break. And here will be the beginning of the consent form. So first, you again create a new question, even though again, the first item here is not a question. And so you can already change that to descriptive text. And you can highlight the relevant just text and paste that onto here. You may call that the consent statement. And then for the next item, as you can see, the respondent does have to respond, even though it's just a one click, one choice, not quite multiple, but Quadrix will still treat that as multiple choice. And so in that case, you will actually tell Quadrix that there's only the one choice. As you can see, it's diminished that to one. And so you still copy and paste. And then you copy that statement as the response, one response. And you paste. By default, Quadrix likes to um, estimate what will happen. And as you can see, it thinks that it should still be a multiple choice. And it's not. So you can tell it by clicking down this button so that it's reduced to just your one response of giving the consent. You may call that, for instance, consent giving. And you want the next item with something similar. So again, you copy and then you paste. 
you can do the informing about the fact that there's only one choice after you've pasted and then you copy and you paste again. This time you can give it the heading of age this claim. <clears throat> and below you can see there's some descriptive text followed by some real multiple choices. So let's stick that in first, paste, and it's descriptive text. You can just call that demographics. And you know that there will be three multiple choice or three more questions. So you can actually add some more by using the side buttons. One, two, three. You know, the first one is about your gender. Change that to gender. Second is age. So change the heading as well. The last one is about meditating experience. So I copy and paste a longer statement. Change that to meditation. As you can see, gender is a very common question. So it's already been determined by Quadrix. Your age is actually something participants would have to enter. And therefore, we change that into something called text entry. And you can see the participant will have to fill in their own age. And here in meditation experience, you only have two choices, but you can just start typing. And you see because of almost like um, automatic texting, it's got maybe as well. So you want to tell Quadrex you don't want that. So instead of having maybe, the second one is also a no. And if you now go to edit multiple here, you reduce that to two, then that's the end of the information, consent and demographics. So you can see that we have finished creating the first block or section of information, consent, demographics for the participants. And so from the next block, it will actually be the real questionnaire starting from, in my case, I prefer to present mindfulness first. So I add block and here I change that into mindfulness. It doesn't matter which variable you choose to present first in your full questionnaire, but I prefer mindfulness. And from my document in waiting, I know that the very beginning is still some instructions. So that means it's just descriptive text. And so the first item, when I create a new question, I change that to descriptive text. I may even call that just M for mindfulness instruction. And so I can highlight, copy, and paste. And then from there on, I know that there will be 15 questions in the mindfulness questionnaire, each with the six responses. And so I can first just create 15 items by clicking on that button 15 times, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. If I make a mistake of pressing too many times, I can always delete one. You can even add something in between two items should you need to by clicking on the relevant plus sign. And so in first instance, when I want to copy and paste the first question, I copy and I paste, not forgetting to change the question heading to mindfulness one and one. And then I'm holding off 
copying and pasting the responses for a good reason. So I'll just create a few more questions. I paste again. M2. And then I create the third one by copying and pasting. M3. And so on and so forth. Imagine that I have created all of the items statements only, but I still have to tell Quadrix these are my responses for the participants. The default only has three, so first I need to let Quadrix know that there are six by using that button, the plus, to make it six. The first time round, I do need to enter the responses one by one, almost always very frequently, somewhat frequently, somewhat infrequently. You can copy and paste, but in this case, it probably won't save you that much time. And then almost never. Now, the first time you did have to type it all out, but from the second item to the rest, what you can do is indeed copy and paste. What you would do is make sure that you highlight this first item with responses. Click Edit Multiple so these are shown as text. Highlight them all. Copy. Click on the next item with responses. Edit Multiple. Highlight what's there at the moment. Paste. So second items also got the same responses now. Next one, highlight it, edit multiple, and paste. So, so on and so forth. You can even do it before you have even prepared the questions. That will speed things up quite considerably. So we've created a few items that have the question as well as the response options. For mindfulness, here's a reminder about the important practice of changing that item heading into something that indicates the variable here, mindfulness, as well as the item number here, number three. That's because these headings are directly transferable onto SPSS as the columns headings so that you will know what those scores actually correspond to in each column. So if you imagine mindfulness has been completed as a questionnaire, then imagine if you were the next student in your group, you would want to create the new block for the next um, questionnaire or for the next variable. So it may be, say, openness is one of the next variable, and so on and so forth. And so here's a reminder about um, sharing the workload fairly, so that, for instance, each of you would have to do a block or a section for a variable. The final block, assuming you've done all of the other variables for the lab, would, of course, be the briefing. And as you know from the document that you've got, the briefing is just a lot of text, no question and response. So you just have the brief, and you know it's only a lot of text. Therefore, you click on multiple choice to change it to descriptive text. And I have my ready document here to copy and paste. And that should actually complete the creation of a questionnaire. So now that you have finished um, creating the full questionnaire from information page to um, through all the variables to the end, um, the briefing, 
you can actually have a look at what it will be like for the participants by going to preview at the top. So you can see the information page if they want to participate, they move to consent and what their responses would actually look like. For instance, they type in age, etc, etc. And then what each variables, items and responses also look like when they are responded to as well. Of course, I didn't actually complete making the questionnaire. Um, in fact, I barely made the next block of variable without any question. So, in fact, the next block with a complete um, question and response, the full set is actually debriefing. So if I press this button, it would take me to debriefing. But you get the idea. Now, if I close this first and say everything is in place, you're happy, the whole group's checked for typos, etc. You are ready to distribute. You press distributions, and there are a few ways you can actually do that. One is, of course, email. You can compose an email that will be sent from your um, individual UEL mail account. That can be done by the whole group. So each of you that share the project should do this to your own personal contacts if you're using the email function. And you can see that within the email, it's already got a link. However, a more common way perhaps nowadays is to use social media. If you've got a Facebook account and sign in, you will actually see a post with a link to which you can add your personal invitation to all your Facebook friends to tell them about the study and invite participation which will probably get you quite a lot of participants in a shorter space of time. But of course, you can also just go straight to seeing the link and you may copy and paste it in other things such as Twitter um, or a email that you've already got open, for instance. Or you may want to test drive it yourself by going straight to this link as the first dummy participants. But of course, you need to remember you are the first participant in there. So hopefully this has been useful.